Hey guys, Liam from Playback Society here. Today we're going to be reviewing Bright, aka Netflix's first huge blockbuster movie costing between 90 million and 117 million dollars. Bright is directed by David Ayer. He did Suicide Squad and also Ends of Watch. It is written by Max Landis who did Chronicle and American Ultra. It stars Will Smith and Joel Egerton as two buddy cops with a twist. The basic story is that Will Smith, he got shot. And because he got shot, you know, he took a lot of time in recovery. At the same time, his partner is an orc. On a normal day policing, Will Smith and the orc going on a mission to help some people. And then they end up discovering a few crazy things that leads them to find a magic wand and an elf. And then lo and behold, the magic wand can grant wishes and stuff. Anyone who sees the wand really, really wants the wand because it can make their dreams come true potentially raise a dark lord. Basically what you'd expect from a movie that includes things like orcs, fairies, elves, Mexicans, and yeah. Now the story written by Max Landis, you can tell at this point he's got a few interesting things up his sleeve. He really likes to put spins on concepts and this is no different. The way the cops treat orcs in this film, in this world of Bright, is kind of how you know, the, the, the race war between white Americans and African Americans in the US right now. The only glaring, glaring problem with that is all Max Landis has really done is made the American, the, the white Americans and the African Americans and the Mexicans somewhat equal and then just making the orcs the black people. All Landis has really done is introduce a supernatural element by literally just moving the black people in a more even state with the white people and they're just making the orcs the black people to make it more supernatural. I don't know if that was a great idea because when you watch this movie, all the orcs are like, they're like cool gangster orcs with like bling and shit. And you know, they were acting hard and there were also Mexican gangs and stuff. It would have been pretty much the same movie without the supernatural stuff. So I'm not really sure how effective it is Bright has done in that regard. As for the characters, Will Smith is pretty great. I mean, it's good seeing him in movies again. I wouldn't say he's amazing, but him and Joel Egerton's banter, especially with Max Landis' script, it really does work together. Will Smith, Joel Egerton, they're constantly, you know, taking bashes at each other. The villains here are so undercharacterized, it's kind of a joke. And there's also some characters where you don't even really know where they stand. And I don't know if it's intentional or not intentional, but basically this movie is like, Everyone trying to protect the, uh, Will Smith and Egerton trying to protect the one. And you know, then there's some like police corruption and shit. And like, people end up dead and like, oh, basically everyone wants the one. So every scene is pretty much bad guy after bad guy after bad guy after bad guy. Where the threats are kind of not really felt. You know that your two charismatic leads can't die. So when they're put in like desperate situations, it doesn't feel very desperate. The movie itself doesn't necessarily move at a breakneck pace, but because there's so much going on, there's this focus on these two heroes and eventually we're drifting to all the other players in the game to get us into this world. It's clear that Netflix has ordered Bright number two, that Max Landis really tried to build a world here. And I guess that does add more interest to the film because the story kind of moves in an organic way as we introduce new characters. Everyone wants the wand, therefore we're kind of just thrust into new characters. However, every other character in this movie doesn't really make an impression besides being aesthetically pleasing. The elves are kind of interesting, but I gotta be honest, I think as Numi Rapace, she doesn't say much. And yet she's kind of like meant to be doing all some crazy shit. And also another glaring issue is that this movie is meant to be a kind of, like they talk about more senses of equality and it's really cool to see how Landis tried to bring that into the forefront. It's just kind of covered up by this whole magic kind of magic world. And then I just can't get past the fact that orcs are basically meant to be African Americans and that it's just an additional race which only makes things more complicated. I can't help but think if there's a better way to get your message across rather than go half message, half magic. Um, Cause that's what this movie ultimately feels like. But then at the same time, they talk about all races being equal and then the elves are like crazy fighting ninjas who are like really cool and like fucking shoot and have knives and shit. And then the orcs are meant to be slow and big and strong, but like a stereotype to be dumb. And then the humans are basically they just shoot things. And that brings me to another thing about this movie. It's getting to a point where we've seen very similar things like it before. David Ayer did Suicide Squad and he did End of Watch. Both of those movies have shootouts which are kind of confined to a short period of time. End of Watch pretty much happens in one night um, where they're trapped and Suicide Squad, they also end up having a few shootouts where they're pretty much trapped and where they're pretty much trying to break out of a situation. And then you have 
Max Landis's movies, which are also showing somewhat of a trend when you think of American Ultra. American Ultra also involved a very long shootout over the course of one night. Maybe there is chemistry between the script and the director in it. Bright is really cool for trying to normalize magic, but also showing how magic can kind of be the light of our world, which is really interesting. Now, believe it or not, as crazy as the story sounds, Bright will actually brighten up your Christmas holiday. It's not a bad movie. It's definitely not an amazing movie, but it's a movie that is worth watching. I don't think people will say that Bright is great because it's a solid, fun movie. I think that the movie is fun. People would probably pay to watch this in the cinemas if Bright actually came out. I will be giving this movie three out of five soju. But since it's on Netflix, give it a watch and see if it can brighten up your holiday season. Catch you guys later.